Hey guys, so uh, I'm going. I'm, going, I'm basically going to re-record this tutorial because uh, it's it was a little bit small in the other because I was using 2017 and on a 4K monitor. 2017 has like really tiny text, so I'm going to re just redo this one for you guys because um, I had to redo that section about adding influences, anyways. So uh, what we need to do is uh, basically um, we have our our mesh right here. And we have our generated rig and skeletal structure, but you see it doesn't doesn't move our object yet, you know. So what we need to do is go in here and attach this uh, all these joints to all of the skin. And remember that's the last step for the um, uh, for the process. Remember, you have to create your rig, you have to create your skeletal joints that are driven by the rig, and then you bind those joints to the mesh. Uh, sorry for repeating that a bunch, but you know it's important. So when it generates, when your rig generates, it's going to create the legs. So select that because we have to select all our joints right now, and there is a fancy schmancy little uh, select skinning joints tool, but I was running into some problems with that between workstations and all that. So I'm going to go in through here, and we're just going to shift select, like I started with that base one, then the spine, then the spine, then the top of the spine, then the top of the, top of the neck, and the head, because on our skinning tool, where that's in rigging, and skinning, Combine skin. Uh -huh. Well, it would open up this box right here. Combine skin. We have bind to joint hierarchy. There's also just selected joints. Also object hierarchy, but we don't want to do that. Um, so we're going to bind to joint hierarchy. And then um, we select this one as well. You're just basically trying to make sure all of your joints are highlighted. And I'm going to leave this one by itself because we're going to add that on later and I'll show you how to add influences because sometimes this process can uh, leave you with some some uh, controls that are uh, some joints that are not influenced on your skin weights. So we have all of that selected. Now we shift select our mesh. That's our last the last step, uh, and then we go to bind skin, join hierarchy, geodesic box, and then bind skin. Sorry, I have to whisper. My my roommates are trying to sleep, so we're gonna have a nice chill skinning session. So you'll see here it's computing geodesic voxel distances, blah, and then it worked. So now when I move this. You'll see all of the joints are now moving with it. And now we go into the skinning step, right? So you'll see when we move stuff around, particularly the head area, because all of this, like look how close her head is to her shoulders and the, this pad and stuff. We move this around, she gets real compressed, like it's just flipping around and oh that's beautiful <laughs> oh man um so yeah so so our job when we're skinning is to try to fix that type of compression or that that like type of deformation because that's bad deformation so if you hold right click you can go to paint, paint skin weights tool that opens up this and you'll see every single different joint in the hierarchy for this um, for this section and you'll probably see it like this and I don't like to use it so it's very nice it's like appealing like this kind of looks like <laughs> looks like toxic almost um, but this is much more clear because what these weights are or what this the gradient means is that for uh, grandma's head joint everything in white is being driven by that head joint. Everything that's black is not affected at all by that head joint. So that's why when we move this, you see that the top moves more than like this bottom stuff. 
but what we need to do is have it move more uniformly with uh, with that joint. So if I hold right click, go back to paint skin weights tool, you can always find skin weights tool under uh, skin and then paint skin weights. Uh, but that's dude, you're gonna be doing this a lot, so uh, you better get better get used to holding right click and going into the, into the paint skin weights tool. Um, but yeah, so as I move as I move this, it gets compressed. So I'm going to um, set a key right here. I'm going to set another key with S. Remember, setting keys is done by pressing S, and everything is broken immediately. Um, I was, well, all right, that was terrifying. I'm not going to lie. Press S again. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure this. Thing, oh my gosh. Grandma, no. Grandma, what did they do to you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little, getting a little distracted. But um, yeah, that, so that was that was a weird um, thing. I, I anticipate that's because I switched over from 2017 over to this. Um, also, during this process, do not delete any of these joints. Don't move these joints. Don't delete these joints. Don't mess with them. The only ones that we can mess with are the ones that we've created. Anything that came with rapid rig do not touch do not touch because it's going to it's going to mess up that rig and that's the last thing we want so now we can paint skin weights and I'm gonna go to pose it looks really messed up like this so um, now I kind of want to introduce you to the locking so you, you see this little lock pad right here. If we lock it down, that means I can't really paint on it. Like I can, but um, you'll see that it's kind of more, um, some of the smooth operations kind of smoothing stuff around there differently. What we want is to move all of this mesh with that joint, right? So we need to paint more influence onto it. And uh, say if I selected every other joint besides this, and then locked them down. When I paint that, if I added, it would, you see how it's adding influence to it, but it's not moving. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna switch back to color ramp. But yeah, so see how it's white, but it's not actually moving? It's because it's, we painted onto it, but all, since all the other values are locked down, it's not able to draw from them. So we need to unlock everything. And this is why I usually fill everything first, but I just wanted to show you the basic paint operations. So, um, this is such like a toxic color right now, I'm going to go back to no color in. Um, so I'm going to add, and you'll see that these points are like flying across to like where they belong. And um, that's good because <laughs> they need to like not crumple in on each other. So you see that as I paint, um, stuff is getting kind of harder to select because it's so deep in there. So I'm going to expand my brush size. I'm going to start just painting over this, and this is where I want. Uh, this is where I would start using that flood tool. So if I move back to my default pose, you'll also see that this forehead is moving more consistent, like say if I, if I paint on the nose, I paint right up on that nose right there, that nose instead of crumpling in is going to travel with that head completely, you see that? It's maintaining that mass even through all this deformation. So what we want is to basically fill the head like that. So I'm going to go back to verti uh, vertices and I'm going to, I'm going to select one of these verts. And since we UV mapped this stuff, I can normally just go in here and drag select over. Oh wait, it's gonna select joints. One second. I'm gonna turn off joints temporarily. So if we're in vertex mode, you can you can definitely just drag select like that, or you can uh, just Control Shift add these to the selection. Um, but I find it to be very quick to just go in and 
um, if you select some birds on here, then let's add these for the heck of it. And then since, since I cut this into different UVs on the uh, UV map, the UV editor, you see how these are different um, patches. Uh, what you can do is, uh, you don't need this open, it'll just be easier to visualize. You can hold control and right click. It was, I think it was command and right click on Mac, but on PC it's control and right click. You can go to UV shell. You see, it just expanded that selection to match that UV shell, which I, I, I really like because now I can easily just be like, all right, this portion is what I want bound to that head joint. So now let me close my UV editor. I need that more. I can go into Mesh Tools. Or wait, no. Completely wrong menu. Now I can go back into my Paint Scan Waste Tool. And I can do something called a flood. So this is going to flood this selected joint with all these values. One and uh, passy one. So boom, right there. You'll see some stuff didn't get uh, flooded, and that's because I didn't have it selected. Because I accidentally left off the ears right here. You see? And I left off the side of these eyes. Because the eyes are two separate UV maps, or UV islands. My bad. UV show. And then paint with skin weights tool. I'm just going to flood that as well. Oh, the eyebrows are too. There we go. Um, this is, I, I've, I haven't put UV, uh, or, um, eyebrow controls in this file yet, so that's why you're not seeing them. But uh, I'm going to go to UV shell there, and I'm going to paint skin weights tool, flood that. So now, now, if you look at that, so now grandma's entire head is kind of still one one solid mass because in the skin weights all of those are completely bound to that head joint so then you're like well how do I get it to be in like the because I'm, I'm gonna need to not pose just that head you know like look her her like sternum is like poking out through her shirt so this is where we need to start going in um, I'm going to select this ring and this, and I kind of, I'm going to go into the skin weights for this, um, and I'm going, oh, oops, one second, let me exit this tool real quick, go back into face map, I'm going to convert this into verts by holding control and right click, I'm just going to go to verts right there. And then um, I need to find the neck control right there. And I'm going to turn back on joints just so I can see what I have selected. Yeah. So that's exactly what I want. I want that control right there. And uh, this is the head right up there. But you see that how the neck has no the weight. It's actually affecting only the bottle. Um, so we're going to flood that. Then, so now you'll see that's kind of being driven a little bit right, right there. Um, so now, um, what you can do is to get, like, because we're going to need a gradient across this to get a nice skinning along the neck and the head. So now that we have that we, we know all of the influences are of this like skin area or between these two joints, we can lock everything else. We can unlock this. We can start using the smooth operation. I only want you guys to use add and smooth for now because replace is going to put an arbitrary number on there. But like I find oftentimes it borrows um from different uh, different weights and it'll borrow stuff that you don't like sometimes 
you have like locked down. And then uh, Maya will be like, I don't know what to do with this. And then so you start getting some weird values with that. Uh, so I want you to only use add and smooth. So now, now with smooth on, if I use a color ramp, you'll see as I start painting over. Oh, wait, it's because I still have those only selected. Go back into select mode, go into object mode, and then go back into paint mode. So I just went into select mode. Switch it back over to the object and clicked on the object. So now it knows that I want to paint the entire surface. And then now I'm back in uh, paint mode. So now if I smooth, you'll see that the, that gradient, that color gradient is coming in. So if I pose it up like this and I smooth, you'll see those verts start to try to average out. So that's, this is what the process of skinning is all about, is trying to get good deformation by getting this nice gradient across these surfaces that need to deform properly, you know. So it's going to take a while, guys. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, this is going to be, it's going to be tedious. And this, this, these points should come up a little bit. That seems to be... That's painting really weird. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the yeah. So you see how when I was on the neck joint, you know, I was trying to smooth those values out. It seemed to deform a lot better when I was smoothing from this head joint. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna use these in order to in order to smooth. Uh, that one's kind of pulling in another way. So I'm gonna do it. Did you see that right there? So like I was I wanted to smooth this control out and it just popped like that really bad. So I'm gonna select the neck instead and kind of smooth from there. So we kind of get that. Um, get some of this back. Oops. So some of these some of these verts don't like being smooth. Um, seems to be a lot of these like the white ones. I think these ones, yeah, you see how they're like popping a lot? So I bet I can come in here, yeah, the opposite way. So yeah, smoothing on white seems to make it kind of wind. <laughs> it's just like, no, I don't want to go there. So I'm trying to smooth from the other direction to get nice deformation. It's kind of, it's kind of abnormal because I, I don't remember that happening as much in 2017. Um, I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong or if this new addition of Maya is whack. I don't know. But either way, so you just keep smoothing out, trying to get that gradient to be nice across the surface. I'm going to widen my brush out a little bit now. Here we go. So now, yeah, see how, see how Grandma's neck isn't just like moving as one mass. Get, getting some nicer shape in there as it's rotating. That's that's super important for for animation because if it looks weird when it's deforming like this, like the animation's just not going to sell. So that's why we do this. Um, but yeah, another the other way is. Uh, Oh, once you get all of these values painted in, you're going to want to delete these keys if you have like the neck exactly where you want it. Um, I would go in and make the neck not a f or the head not affect this stuff down here. And uh, the way you can always fix that is by checking what is pulling on that. So jaw. Grandma's jaw is pulling on that a lot. Jaw tip is not so much. So we don't need to unlock that. So Jaws was most of the point on there. So I want to unbind that. That's why my normal method is what you saw in class of going in uh, selection by selection by hidden joints and just selecting like the entire pelvis and then flooding it there and then flooding each of these to their uh, to their respective joint. Um, I might show that later. 
just to make it, just to get the point across. But I, I imagine a lot of you don't want to work that way. But that is that is how I do it, and it's the most foolproof method of getting your weights exactly where you want it. Um, I would like you to do it that way, but that's going to be later in the video. Uh, but yes, I'll say this jaw is affecting this upper chest. So you need to find uh, it's, it's kind of neck. It's also spine top. There you go, spine top. So spine top needs to take that weight. So I'm going to unlock spine top. It needs to take the weight off of jaw J. And neck you see is not affecting it, so I'm going to lock that down. Head is affecting some of this. Um, but that's not where we're, we're, we're worried most about this stuff. So spine top, since that's pulling it up like that. If we add to this, see it pops right back down. Because our spine top joint, I show joints right up here and it's not rotating it's staying where it was so by having this these values painted in like this we'll see that the neck with the head is no longer affecting it because that jaw was moving around when we moved that head and there you go so now you'll see that there's still some values that need to be fixed like these but um but yeah so that's that method. And once you get all of those values situated, you're going to want to delete these keys. Just delete them straight off that rig. And make sure these are all zeroed out. Now, if you want to copy those values over to the other side, like C, um, just look how if I turn on wireframe. Look how, like, I kind of want this side's deformation for here instead. So if I keep that at a regular um, orientation, and I'm going to mirror across x, you'll see positive negative x to negative x. So if I do that, I'm going to, I believe I need the object selected. I'm going to mirror those weights. Now when I move, you'll see that these are symmetrically deforming because they were symmetrical before they started. So it's gonna, it's, it does a real good job actually of mirroring over the weights. Um, but I, I, and that's pretty much it for um, the basics of, of skinning. Um, but say that you want to add a joint, if you want to append a joint. Um, so say this is in your hierarchy. So if I select child and then parent and then press P, you'll see that it becomes part of that hierarchy. But when I move these controls, they don't they aren't actually moving anything. Right? Because it's not skinned to those joints at all. And if, in fact if I go into the paint skin weights tool, we can't even locate that hair, those hair joints. So what we need to do is add them as influences. So I'm going to select one of those three. Skin. Then I'm going to go to... Uh, then I'm going to shift select the mesh. Sorry about that. I'm going to go to skin, edit influences, add influence. Let's look over the options see what we've got. Geometry. See, so you can add them with... Uh, locked weights so then it doesn't affect your other weights but I'm not too concerned with that right now um, and also you you're supposed to do this adding of joints step before you skin as I said in class so I'm going to uh, I'm going to add these you'll see now when I paint skin weights tool this um, this joint hierarchy is in there as well so um, in order to get those to start moving, you're going to need to steal weight from, looks like, head tip and head and eye. Yeah, so look at how many different joints have weight in this area. So that's why I like to do my flood method. Um, so 
So on this first joint, this is the, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do the flood method for this. I'm going to do the flood method for the bottom as well because I, I, it's just such a pain to be going through different verts and then having to mess with all this value. So I'm just going to go to this vert. I'm going to select the shell because I know this is a completely different object that I've done. Like I didn't attach it to the actual mesh there. It's just visually attached, you know. So I can just select that shell. And then I can go to my paint skin waste tool. Then I can go to that first hair joint. You'll see that it highlights all of them. As I go down the selection, it deselects some of them. But yeah, we're going to flood all of them to that. Now we have joint two. So my idea is to kind of go, I'm going to go in four mode and just kind of deselect all the verts after that. Um, after that first joint. Whoops. Oh man, yeah, it's, it's the. Alright, so I'm just going to get out of that. Um, that stuff, and I'm going to hide joints, go back into vertex, and now, now I should be able to properly deselect it with control. Um, oops. So I was holding the control shift there with just regular control. And go back into paint, and then with joint two, because you can see it's that one right there. I'm going to flood that. And I'm going to need to deselect all my other verts that aren't right there. And I'm going to go to, oops, sorry, paint skin weights tool. And then flood those. So now it's going to be pretty. Yeah, you see, you see those seams, you know, right there. So we need to fix those, right? And so this is what the smooth tool is like perfect for. So if I set a key right there, and then set another one up here, we can kind of just time slide between those. So now when I'm painting, I don't have to go pose it each time and now I'm going to lock everything because all, all of our values are on here we know all of the weight that is affecting these verts is on these verts so now I'm going to unlock this one I'm going to unlock this one because I want to I want to get the gradient between these two to be really nice so if I go into smooth it's uh it's kind of deformed a little bit See as I smooth it gets it's slowly kind of like relaxing, you know. And honestly, paying skin weight is kind of relaxing when you know what's going on. Uh, I know that this first time is probably gonna be pretty rough for you guys. Um, that's why I was saying it's important to get these models ready for this step. This is, I remember my first time doing skin weights was pretty annoying. Yeah, so we got all those skin weights set up. I'm going to keep smoothing this stuff out to get a nice gradient right there. This is why I like this uh, flooding every control method versus uh, versus kind of just painting on top of that first geodesic voxel bind because it gets you're gonna have weights yeah see like how much better that is than this top area like you see how jagged that gets but now that this is all smooth you know these are these joints are bending pretty far it's actually deforming pretty nicely. But yeah, so this is why I like this flood and then smooth method because it's, just, it's gonna be a nightmare trying to figure out exactly which joints are controlling what on there. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna keep smoothing this stuff out. Notice how between 
because now that I'm painting this joint, let me show joints. Now that I'm painting on this joint other than this joint, I locked down this first joint because I was like, yes, this is where I want all those skin weights. And now I'm just painting the difference between these ones. So. There we go. I would always I would paint asymmetrical details like this last problem because uh, mirroring might get a little bit weird when you're mirroring skin weights like that. So it'd be nice to get all of your other skin weights like uh, accounted for before doing this type of stuff. So now let's see how this looks. Yes, yes. You see that? See how it smoothly bends? Like that's what we're trying to get. We don't want it to be like all sharp and jagged like that other side was. But yeah, so that's skinning. Um, as far as the tutorial, I, I'm going to show you just a little bit more. Uh, this is this is just some just me doing more skinning stuff. It's not like I'm going to present much new information. Um, and this is just like my regular method that I do. So I'm going to select all these faces, right? I'm just going to get actually everything from the waist down. And since we're only going to do one side and mirror it, we only need to select one side. Um, so I'm going to get pretty much all that waist area. And I'm going to convert it to verts. I'm going to paint skin waist tool. And I'm going to unlock all my joints that I'm not using. And then we're going to find that root joint. You'll see the geodesic box bind tried to its best to like find what it needed to bind to that um, control. And you know, did a pretty good job. But uh, we, we want to be sure. We want to be exactly sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flood everything with um, one. Um, excuse me. Wait a minute, something else going on here. Something's a foot. Something is a foot, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's because I was on smooth mode and I was flooding it with a smooth operation. So if I flood it with add, there you go. That's what I was looking for. So now we have that white fall off, right? And now I go in, I select every other joint, I lock it down. And I'm looking just for those left hip things. Yeah, there you go. So now I know that, like, look at this highlighted joint that I'm painting on, the hip right here. I'm going to flood everything on the leg after that hip to that hip, just so I know exactly what I'm going to be painting between. So I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of double, uh, I'm, I'm, this is the way I selected that edge loop was by left clicking this then shift double left clicking to the left of it. So now it's got that one. I'm going to do the same for this one. This is this kind of stuff is why it's important to have good topology guys. So I can easily select this stuff. I'm going to turn off joints because at this point I can just do control shift to just add to my selection. And I just dragged over that. So now if I control and then hold right click two verts. So now it's converted that selection to versus after I paint skinning weights. And if I uh, flood to that hip, now you'll see that that leg that was originally on the root is now on the hip. So I'm going to lock the root down. I'm going to go to the knee. I'm going to go to select mode. And so I need to deselect. I kind of like to just exiting the tool and going to the regular vertex mode. Um, everything here under the knee is going to, oops, sorry, it's going to be a control of click and drag, is going to be flooded to that knee, so now I need to go back in and go to, I just held right click to bring up that menu, don't worry about it. 
ain't nothing we haven't seen before. We're just going to go to that knee and then flood that. And then same with the ankle. We go into vertex. I'm going to deselect everything I don't need there. Paint skinny weights. Uh, I think I'll, uh, I'm going to try to add some timestamps to this video to be like, this is the flood and smooth method. Uh, this is mirroring and stuff. So look for that in the comments. Um, and yeah, so I just flood that in there. Oops, I just had had some extra verts up there. Ha! <laughs> extra verts. Got them. All right. Anything else up there? Yeah, just that one. All right. We don't want to flood. We don't want to be flooding that. So going back to my paint skin weights. Flood that. Then the ball of the foot. Going to the words. I'm going to deselect all that stuff that's not there. And then, yeah. Because this is the ball control, so it needs to bend at this point. Then I go back to paint skin weights. Then I go to flood fill. And now this should start. Yeah. So you see how it's bending there? I believe this has a, yeah, toe up down. Yeah. So now that we have that all flooded, I'm going to set some keys to just do some basic movement. So I need to get this pose looking good. I need to get this pose back here looking good. I might as well point that out as much as possible. So you see that now. And I should also get a completely side version as well. So if I move this, we're going to go back to world axis by holding W and L. Or right, left click, not L. If I can, come on. <laughs> come on, Mike. Get it together. Um, so I want this to look good as well. Um, that's gonna be hard to get. I'm gonna zero this out. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna set a key right there, and then I'm going to zero it out right here for all the other poses. And it's kind of interpolating there, so I'm gonna go to this. I'm gonna set a zero key right there as well. Sorry about that. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, so now we need to fix this. We'll go back to the paint skinny weights. Um, with the object selected, we we'll go and paint skinny weights out. That way we're painting on the entire object. And we need to basically just smooth out the differences between these. So, um, right here, between the hip and the knee, like we want to get good deformation there. Like it's kind of just shearing like that. So what we want to do is start smoothing. I'm going to go to B and hold left click to adjust. I'm going to start smoothing these. And think about it, like this, this part right here should basically never bend because it's kind of like a pad. So this should be bound completely to the knee. So I'm going to use add on this. I'm just going to completely make that 100% white. That's why I like to use color ramps so you know when you're at 100% uh, influence on a specific vert. So now this no longer gets stretched out on the bend. Remember, only add and smooth. Only add and smooth. And definitely only smooth when you only have like, <laughs> uh, definitely only smooth when you only have two joints unlocked that's going to mess you up up so, so me we kind of smooth these frets down right there oops clicked off the mesh so I'm gonna go click on that again paint skin waste tool I'm just gonna keep smoothing around here I'm with some of these frets that's why it's important to have these extra uh, edge loops at these joints right here 
kind of want that um, this edge loop of the boot to not deform very much. So I'm going to leave that completely bound to the uh, to the hip. I mean to the knee. My bad. We keep smoothing these. And this that stuff like skirts are really hard to do. I find because there's so much geometry on top of uh, like there's so much geo in here that needs to bend up in order to support this this kind of deformation so um, I'll show you a little bit of that the way I'll, I'll do this is by just oh, I'm probably just going to add stuff and you see at this root that instead needs to go to the knee so if I add one here you'll see that this skirt area starts to get pushed up with that so that was a bit too much I think to add so I'm going to undo that I'm going to turn down my opacity on here so I'm going to add only a little bit at a time so as this lifts up we can kind of paint on these points to add get some kind of deformation in the skirt as well. Right here. Awesome, awesome. And we're going to be doing smoothing on the inside of that skirt. So on this interior, we're definitely going to need to smooth that. So you want Ideally, to have these verts be. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to do these higher ones first. I'm also going to decrease the opacity even more. And kind of get a softer brush for this. I'm going to make sure none of these verts are like collapsing in on themselves. There. And yeah, it, the, these skirt shapes are really, uh, yeah, really hard to do, I find. In fact, uh, you would probably have joints inside these that it's bound to, and where the joints would them, themselves deform better, but um, definitely for our purposes, we don't need that. So here we go. So you can kind of see how that piece is actually coming out now. It's still blasting through right there, but I might even um, might even end up skinning some of this back onto the hip itself to kind of bring that in there. To kind of help counteract that. But you don't want to do that too much because it's kind of it's kind of a cheat. But I find it helps out, out in this type of situation. But if you don't have a skirt like this then you're probably not gonna have a problem. Um, we also need to smooth this out between the hip and the root because you'll see as the, the butt deforms very poorly right here. So this is when you use smooth. Remember only two unlocked at a time. And Sorry I just got a text. I want to make sure it was my roommates. So I'm going to smooth this. Maybe turn on color ramp. So yeah, we got to get that butt to deform better. So we want to, in this pose, not have not 
have the verts stretching too much right there right now. I'm going to do the opposite way. crotch area is always difficult because it needs to be bound a little bit to the leg and a little bit to the pelvis as well so it's like like each leg is going to have like a half influence on this point and it, gets, it always gets pretty frustrating but it's coming along pretty nicely Here. Very nice, very nice. And yeah, so this that's, that's pretty much the skinning process. Like I, I feel like you, you at this point get the idea. Like I like to I really like to flood and then uh, smooth my points later because you, you get, it's a lot easier to get nicer deformation and you know exactly where all of your um, skin weights are so I'd, I'd prefer you did it this way um, just because you get way better results and so now if I you can see how that that legs deforming a lot better than it was but yeah and then you'd have to do that for each joint in there and uh, then mirror it over eventually and then uh, you'll be done it's gonna take a long time though to be honest so, especially your first time. But, uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much the tutorial. Thanks for watching.